Amen. Yeah. And we all know how much you love Jesus. Come out in this way. It's good to be here. Thank you all for coming out in this uh, bitter weather. But we're here. We're here to praise God. We're here to break open his word. You know, life is often more than what meets the eye. You know, sometimes we'll look at a situation and we'll make a judgment about it. Only to learn a little bit later the whole story and realize how quick we were to make the wrong judgment. Yes. Or sometimes when we don't know the whole story and we don't know everything that we see, we miss opportunities that present themselves because we're just not looking in the right place. Because life often is more than what meets the eye. Well, in today's gospel story, Jesus heals a man with leprosy. The man approaches Jesus, he asks for healing, and Jesus heals him. Simple as that. But really, the story that St. Mark tells is much deeper than that. Because there's more in this story than meets the eye. You see, the first thing we have to know about this story is how in the ancient world, leprosy was any kind of skin disease or ailment that was considered contagious. It could have been something as simple as chicken pox or simple, something as bad as what we now call Hansen's disease. And under the Jewish law, as we read in the book of Leviticus, if anyone was determined to have a contagious skin disease as leprosy, then they had to live apart from the community. And they had to stand back from people. And if others came near them, they had to shout out, unclean unclean as a warning that someone is approaching someone else who was contagious. And so the first thing to notice about the story that St. Mark tells today is the boldness of this man with leprosy. Did he cry out, unclean, unclean? No, he didn't. He defies the rule. And he comes right up to Jesus. He kneels before him and he begs him to heal him. And in an equally bold manner, Jesus touches this man with a contagious disease and heals him. See, and that's the first thing to notice about this story, the boldness of what is happening here. The boldness of a man who comes and asks for forgiveness, for healing, just as we need to be in our own prayers to Jesus. Not timid, not apologetic, but bold, even defiant when we come to the Lord and place our needs before him, holding nothing back, but telling him all that is in our hearts. You see, because Jesus is not afraid 
of our ailments. Jesus is not afraid of us asking for help. And Jesus is not afraid to touch us and to send his healing power upon us. Because Jesus will do whatever is necessary to heal us even if it means Jesus himself breaking the rules and risking becoming unclean to save us. We should never be afraid to ask for healing. And we should always be confident that Jesus will be bold in his response. But you see, there's even more to this story than the man's healing of leprosy. Because Jesus heals more than what meets the eye. This man was hurting in more ways than in just his physical illness. Imagine what it must have been like for him when he first discovered that he had leprosy. Remember, under the Jewish law, he would have been separated from his family and his neighbors and forced to live outside of town in a leper colony. He would have lost all of his personal support, his livelihood, even his ability to worship in the temple for he would have been declared unclean. In essence, the disease isolated him from others at the very time he needed their support the most. And if you think about it, can't our own illnesses and brokenness do the same for us? Some of the times I have felt the loneliest in life is when I have had to deal with illness. Because illness and other struggles cause you to go inside of yourself to imagine how you're going to deal with this thing that threatens us. And that in itself begins to isolate us from others because it's hard to imagine that others can relate to what we're experiencing. And yet at the same time, it's not just the sick person who suffers. How many of us have had to care for a loved one who is sick? The worry and concern that we experience about their illness, the need to reorganize our whole lives, in order to care for them, and all of the extra chores that we have to take on, all because another is sick. Those around a person who is sick suffer as well, because illness affects both the individual and the community, and consequently, both the individual and the community are in need of healing. And Jesus can do both. You see, when Jesus heals the leper in today's gospel, he also heals the community. When he tells the healed man to go show himself to the priest, that's a charge to begin the process to reintegrate that man back into the community. Because once the priest determines that the leprosy is healed, the man will be able to return to his family and his friends, his work and his worship. Both the man and the community will be restored by his return. And so when we experience brokenness, not just in our own personal lives, but in our community as well, today's gospel teaches us 
that Jesus has the power to heal both. Whether it's the result of physical sickness or even the greater ills of terrorism, racism, or poverty, Jesus has the power to heal all of these things. And so, like the man with leprosy, we should never hesitate to rush up to him and to fall on our knees and beg him to heal our families, our neighborhoods, our society. Because Jesus heals more than what meets the eye. But wait, there's more. St. <laughs> Mark tells us that when this man approached Jesus, he knelt down and said to him, If you wish, you can make me clean. Mm. Now, why wouldn't Jesus wish to heal this man? By the time of this encounter, Jesus already had a reputation for being a healer. So why would this man doubt Jesus' desire to heal him? And that's where we have to understand the impact of illness on this man's faith. Again, remember, the rules regarding the exclusion of lepers were in the book of Leviticus, the Bible, the Word of God. And according to the Bible, the religious leaders of the day held the key as to whether this man would be allowed inside the community or held outside the community. And so in that context, the man's concern about whether Jesus would want to heal him becomes understandable. You see, this man had been beaten down. The very religious community that was supposed to support him had abandoned him. In short, he had become cynical about people's willingness to help him. And so he says to Jesus, if you wish, you can make me clean. Because this man is no longer sure that anybody wishes to come to his aid. You see, cynicism arises whenever we experience disappointments in life and especially disappointments that lead us to a sense of isolation. Whenever people repeatedly disappoint us, especially when they fail to help us in our need, we often pull back and become critical of them. We begin to question their motives and to be suspicious of everything they say even concluding that no one is really on our side anymore. And we can become so isolated in our cynicism that we even begin to wonder whether God is on our side. After all, if God were on our side, wouldn't we find the support that we need? And so what's the point of even asking God for healing or for help if we're convinced that those things won't happen anyway? Like the man in today's gospel, we become more and more isolated and cynical and even in greater need of healing. And so along with the man's leprosy and his separation from his community, Perhaps most importantly, Jesus heals the man's cynicism. In the midst of despair, disappointment, disillusionment, indeed in the face of the best cynics among us, Jesus assures us that he really does care.
We can't always expect him to take away our suffering, but we can expect him to join us in our suffering, to reach out and to touch us with his reassuring presence. Because he knows what it is to suffer, and he knows how to walk with us in our suffering. That does not always give us exactly what we want, but it can heal a sense of isolation. It can heal our cynicism. And perhaps healing our cynicism is the most important thing that Jesus can do because cynicism ultimately breaks our trust and our faith in God. And without trust and faith in God, there can never be true healing in our lives. So you see, life is often more than what meets the eye. What looks like a simple healing of a man with leprosy is a much deeper and richer healing of a person's body, community, and spirit. And in our own brokenness and struggles in life, we too have to become aware of the many ways in which we need healing. And then we have to have the courage and the boldness to approach Jesus and ask for that healing. And then we have to have the confidence that Jesus not only wishes to heal us, but that he has the power to do so, even beyond our wildest imaginations. Because in the end, Jesus always heals more than what meets the eye. Amen.